things are going into your eyes, they're going into your ears, they go down into your heart, and then out of your heart, your mouth speaks. That's how it works. So if, you're, if your conversation is off, if you still cussing, it's because of what you fed yourself yesterday. See, understand this, God is not glorified. Now, I want you to make sure you get this. God is not glorified when something bad happens to you. He's glorified when he brings you out. Um, let me try that one more time. See, he's not glorified because you're on drugs. He's glorified when you come out. He's not glorified when there's a sickness on your body. He's glorified when you come out of that sickness. And so now watch this now. And so our proper response brings us out of anything. He'll catch up when they jump on. Um, I want you to go with me to the book of Luke. Uh, the book of Luke. And um, let's have a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so very much for your kindness. Thank you, Father, for giving us uh, giving us a word that's, uh, that fits where we are. Father, I pray, Lord God, right now in Jesus' name that you would that as we receive your word on tonight, that we'll receive it with much wisdom, much revelation, and much understanding that would impact where we are in our lifetime. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you for it. Amen. So let's jump in. Let's jump in. Let's look at some of the things that um, Jesus spoke about in um, in the word, some of the things that Luke uh, began to shine light on so that we could uh, so that we could rise to some level of um, effectiveness in our in our prayer life. Um, you know th this is by far uh, one of the most important subjects that we could actually study uh, and understand. And there are several things that I want to I want to see if we could uh, gain some level of understanding on tonight. Um, th there's several things uh, that I really want to I really want to point out. And but the but the main thing of it all is going to be prayer. What does prayer really look like? What does prayer really look like? How does it work? Um, and how do we apply that in our lives where we are right now? That's the question. Uh, that's the question we really need to be asking ourselves. How do we how do we take what we've been talking about? How do we take that and bring um, how do we take that and um, and apply that to where we are, bring some level of understanding, how do we really do this thing? How do we really do this thing called prayer? Um, and I think that's an important question that we have to, that we have to ask ourselves. How do we do this thing called prayer? Uh, and, you know, and I mean, why is it really so important that we just do it a, a certain way? And obviously, there's not just one way to do it, but there are some major principles that we need to focus on in order to, uh, in order to identify exactly how this is done and um, bring our everyday life to a point where not only do we hear God and understand what God wants with us, uh, but also be able to uh, be able to go before him and ask him to do some things that possibly we hadn't been able to uh, we hadn't been able to accomplish in the past. So when we look at this on tonight, and uh, and once again, I want to I want to go to Luke chapter number uh, chapter number eleven. Luke chapter number eleven, and I want to look at. I want to look at this thing that the disciples were asking Jesus. 
And I don't know whether, whether or not you have ever really asked the Lord uh, this question or asked God this question. Um, but here's what the disciples asked Jesus. And it says in verse number, it says in verse number one, and as he was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, I'm sorry, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John also taught his disciples. Teach us to pray, just as John also taught his disciples. Now, let's settle one thing right now. One of the things that we have to make sure that we understand is that God is so serious about discipleship. He's so serious about discipleship. Now, one of the qualities, one of the qualities or one of the assignments that Jesus took on as he is discipling, as he's discipling these people, then he's called to his side. One of the things about prayer. Now understand this, and I want you to really get this. Um, one of the uh, one of the things of discipleship is to make sure that is to make sure that those that we're discipling know exactly how to pray. And you know, there are people that, and I think this should be a reality, that there are people that are in your world that are depending on you, um, you really should take these same things that we're doing right here, you should take these same things that we're doing and be able to disciple other people in uh, how to pray. One of the best ways to actually get this in your spirit, one of the best ways is to, is to really just be committed that uh, commit to the fact that you're going to grab at least one person, at least one person, that you're going to grab at least one person and teach them this. You're going to teach them how to pray. You say, well, how in the world am I going to teach them how to pray? And I need some help in that area. Well, that's why you, that's why you grab one person and you, you make the determination that I'm going to learn everything that I could possibly learn on this subject right here, when we're gathering together on a Wednesday night and on a Sunday, I'm gonna take everything that Bishop is talking about and then I'm gonna grab one person that's not hearing him teach this. I'm gonna grab one person, I'll try that one more time. I wanna be real clear on that. I'm gonna grab one person that's not hearing him teach this and I'm gonna teach them how to pray. And I wish that I had just one thumbs up on that one. Um, so now watch this now. So, so let's look at this because this is, this is vital. It's vital that we understand this. So Jesus is now, now here's one of the things that we're going to do on tonight as we, as we look at this. Understand one of the things that you must identify as we, as we study as we study this particular passage, is that we're going to go back and see what the previous passage is talking about, so that we can so that we can move forward into the into the passage at hand. So, in other words, now let's 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 just let's just um, uh, make this down, put this down as a note. We're going to look back to move forward. I want you to put that down as a note. That's a real practice. It's a real practice. It's a real study practice. And I think that it's imperative that you and I absolutely, uh, absolutely understand that and do that. We're going to look back so that we can move forward. <laughs> I want you to say that. I want you to say that to yourself. We're going to look back so that we can move forward. Now, so in looking back, and this is this is really interesting, folks, because in looking back, if we're going if we're going to make sure that you that you and I are praying effectively, there are some things that you and I are going to have to we're going to have to put uh, make sure it's working in our lives. There are several things that we're going to have to make sure 
are working in our lives. Now, so let's go back to verse number 38, 10 and 38, uh, because as we look at this, I'm telling you that there are all kinds of people that don't have, that don't have these things working in their life. So therefore, their prayer life is not working. I'll try that one more time. There, there are so many people that don't have these qualities working in their life. So therefore, their prayer life is not working. Um, and you know, we all can we all can pretend and and psych ourselves out. But you know, I think deep down inside, we know when our prayer life is working and when it's not. I think I think we really do. Um, I think we really do know that. So let's take a look at verse number 38, chapter number, uh, chapter number 10. Um, go ahead, Carla, read. I'm sorry, sir. That's all right. Um, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 10. Okay. Uh, thank you. No, it's okay. Luke chapter 10, uh, verse number 38. We're going to take we're going to take a look at that, and I want to make sure that we identify that, and we're going to move forward. We're going to look back to move forward. What we're actually talking about is in chapter number eleven, but in order to effectively understand chapter number eleven, we're going to look back because understand this: we are not we're not just interested in what the uh, we're not just interested in. Um, what we can pick and choose from in here. We wanna make sure that we know what's going on in this prayer world that Jesus is dealing with here. What's going on? What is Jesus actually dealing with here? Understand this, not just what, the, what he's actually physically doing but or, or what he's physically teaching, but what is it that, what is it that's in his mind? What's in the mind of Jesus that we need to get in order to make our prayer life work? Let's let's uh, let's look into it. Uh, Ten and thirty-eight, Luke. Well, while they were traveling, he entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who also sat at the Lord's feet and was listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, and she came up and asked, "Lord." Don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? So tell her to give me a hand. The Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has made the right choice and it will not be taken away from her. Okay, so now watch this now. So here, here's the thing that we need to understand. If we're ever going to get chapter number 11, we're going to have to understand what happened in that short passage. We're going to have to understand what happened in that short passage, because understand this: a lot of times we're trying to we're trying to really get it, but it's not really we're not really getting it because we're missing pieces. And understand this: when we look at that passage, when we look at that passage, Jesus, uh, Jesus and his disciples they they're, they're traveling. So in the fact that they're in the fact that they're traveling, Martha decides that she's going to accommodate Jesus in his travel. Now, in doing that, Martha is going to, is going to uh, function in her gift. I'll try that one more time. I said Martha is going to function in her gift. Nothing's wrong with what Martha is doing. I'm going to try that one more time. There's nothing wrong with what Martha is doing. Now, but now, as Jesus proved, there's also nothing wrong with what uh, Mary was doing. So Mary chose to sit at the Lord's feet to see what it was that he was talking about. What is he actually saying? What is he trying to convey here? So Mary was the one that was listening to that. Now, I want you to go back. Because I want you to, I want you to actually see. Um, I want you to actually see verse number forty. So read verse number forty again. Now we understand that, that Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet. Martha was Martha was uh, functioning in her gift of serving. 
This is and and understand this. I'm gonna put a little plug right here. This is this is real big for people that operate in serving that or they have a gift of service. It's real big right here. But we're not going to talk about that tonight. We're going to stay on course. Go ahead and read verse number 40 again. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, and she came up and asked. Okay, stop. Martha was what? Distracted. She was distracted by what? Her many tasks. Okay, now watch this now, folks. She was, di she was distracted by her many tasks. So, so getting in the face of God was a, was, understand this, she was so busy with her, with the task that she was performing, that getting in the face of God or hearing what, uh, hearing what, uh, uh, what Jesus was saying was really not on, it was really not number one in her mind. That was not number one in our mind. And do you realize how many of us are, how many of us function in the exact same way? We're so busy about so many different things. Now we say that we don't have time to study and we say that we don't have time to pray. But the reality is, is that we're busy with other tasks. So we hadn't really made study or setting at the feet of God or getting into his word, or getting into prayer, we hadn't really made that a priority. We, that, that has not really been a priority for us. You know what I mean? Really, really just think about some of the things that you do, and some of the things that, uh, some of the things that are a priority to you. Um, some of those things, you know, you, you know, hands down, you, you engage in those things. Uh, but the challenge is, is that you hadn't really made prayer a priority. So, so that is what's going on here in this passage in chapter number 10. Th that's the exact thing that's actually going on here. So, um, so I want you to look at this. I want you to look at, I want you to look at the two different mindsets. Now, remember, we're talking about prayer, but I want you to look at the two different mindsets. Martha has a mindset of serving. And nothing's wrong with serving. Jesus never, and this is one of the things you need to see in that passage. Jesus never criticized her for what her gift was. He never criticized her for serving. Never did criticize her for that. But now the reality is, is that, um, is that he also didn't criticize Mary for not helping because she was listening. He also didn't criticize her. So he didn't criticize either one. So now here's the thing that you and I have to uh, have to understand. He did distinction between the two things. He did say that he did say, uh, you know, Martha, you know, you, you're you're really careful about a lot of things, uh, but there's only one thing that is needful, or there's only one best thing here, and that's what Mary has chosen to do. Understand this: the reality is is that. And I want you to really go back with me uh, back to that time. Jesus come, Martha welcomes Jesus to the house. Jesus didn't, have to, uh, Jesus didn't ask to come in. Jesus didn't ask to stay there. Jesus didn't ask to come in. Jesus didn't ask nothing from Martha. Martha decided everything. Martha decided, Jesus, I want to accommodate you in my house. Martha decided, Jesus, I'm going to fix you the best meal that you've ever had in your life. Uh, Martha decided all of those things. But now understand this. And Jesus was receiving because she was, uh, because that's what she said that she wanted to do. Understand this. Jesus was good ground. He was going to allow her to do that. But the reality is, and, and I, man, I really want to talk to all of our, all of our serving people, you know, people that have that serving gift. How many things do you do that people never asked you to do? I'm going I'm to ask that question one more time. I like that question right there. How many things are you doing that people never ask you to do? Doing it because, you know, somewhere on the inside of you, you really have a passion in that area. But then Jesus makes a distinction. He says, but what, what Mary decided to do between the two, that was best. 
that was best. Because first of all, you didn't have to, you didn't have to do what you're doing, but what Mary has decided to do, and understand this, Mary has decided to listen. Mary decided to get still, sit at the feet of Jesus, and I just want to listen to what is being said. Understand this. <laughs> Glory to God. Do you realize how many people, now I'm, now I'm sure it's not everybody, but do you realize how many people that when we're doing a meeting like this, when we're doing a time like this, a time in the word where we're, where we're engaged in God's word, do you realize how many people that don't have their camera on, doesn't mean it's everybody, but don't have their camera on, busy about doing other things while they're listening to while they're listening to the word. Now, and I can promise you, and I can promise you from the experience that when you're, that if you're not setting down still, I can promise you that you miss some things. I promise you that you do. I know from experience. You know, you don't have to tell me, I'll tell you. We, you will miss some things. <laughs> and, and Lord knows I have missed a lot of things because I was busy doing things but I'm gonna I'm gonna put this I'm gonna put this video on that that I really do need to listen to I really need to get as much information out of this that I can get and before you know it I done walked off I'm I'm doing something else I'm doing this I'm doing that but I'm still listening and I promise you most of the video or most of the audio I did not get why because I was busy doing other things I was busy about other tasks this is what So your listening had turned off. You refocused your attention to do this and your listening turned off. Understand this. That's one of the challenges that you and I have in prayer. Now watch this. I want to take you over in chapter number 11 now. But I wanted to get you, I wanted to, I wanted you to get both mindsets. One has a mindset to set at the feet of Jesus and really hear the words or, or you, you, can, you can compare that to prayer. Uh, and the other had, the other didn't mind listening to Jesus. Now, now, please, please understand that. Martha didn't mind listening to Jesus. It's, that, it's just that she was just busy. She was just busy doing some other things while she was listening. And that caused her, watch this, to be so upset with Mary. Understand this, jot that down. She was upset. And I think that we need to pull that out of there. Uh, Martha was upset. Why? Because Mary wouldn't help. Mary was sitting down listening to Jesus. You know, how dare Mary sit down and listen to the Lord while I'm busy up here working? Why don't she help me and we can both listen to the Lord and we can both work? And what she would probably would not have said is that we would both miss most of what the Lord has said. And in the chat for that one, because so many of us have already done it. Now, watch this. Watch this. The disciples asked, you say, well, I don't have anything to do with Mary and Martha. You're talking about the disciples now. No, it, it actually does. Because now understand this, the context now, now what we're actually doing at this point, we're bridging the context from, uh, from the Mary and Martha narrative to the discipleship narrative. Understand this. Let, let's, look, let's look at the two things that was happening here. Uh, Mary and Martha were being, uh, were being discipled by Jesus, but Martha was busy about things. Mary was listening. So it was discipleship. When you come across to chapter number 11, what is it? It's still discipleship. Now, the disciples are uh, very specifically um, in, um, in chapter number 11, Luke chapter number 11, very specifically, um, he was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples uh, asked him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John has also taught his disciples. So John taught his disciples to pray. So Jesus, since you know, since you're praying, now 
let's go, let's go a little further, Carla. Verse number two. He said to them, whenever you pray, say, Father, your name be honored as holy, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we ourselves also forgive everyone in debt to us and do not bring us into temptation. He also okay. said- Okay, rest right there for just one moment. Now, let's go back through those things, Carla. Let's go back through, watch. Let's take, let's take just one, uh, let's just take one by one. Now watch this now. He said to them, Whenever you pray, say what? Father. Father. And understand this. Let's stop there first. Relationship. We have to understand that we have a that we have a father-son or father-daughter relationship with God. Understand this. You say, okay, well, why is that so important? Because it impacts, it, it, it impacts, uh, it, it impacts how you receive. See, if, if, you're, if you're praying to God and he's God, the judge to you, then you have to understand that um, the receiving component to that is different than when it's your father. And, and I'm going to show you because, because now remember, we went back so that we can go forward, right? We went back so that we can go forward. Now, so we, so in other words, when we look at chapter 10, the Martha Mary situation, when we look at that, Martha had to get rid of her attitude. Oh, I'm, I'm going I'm to I'm get into this just a bit. Martha had to get rid of her attitude. Jesus, you know what I mean? You know, when, 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 we, when we are praying to God, when we're praying to God, God does not want an angry prayer. Now, if, if Carla, actually, if we go back and if we look at, um, and if we look at this, how, what Martha actually asked, what Martha actually asked, Lord, do you even care? Now, 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 that just sounds a little disrespectful to me. Maybe it don't to you, but that just sounds a little disrespectful to me. Lord, do you, do, do you even care that, that she won't help me? Do you even care? Understand this. See, the attitude is off. So now watch this now. So when, when the disciples ask him, teach us how to pray, Look at what he look at what he says, and he said and he said to them, when you when you pray, and, and okay, now here's a here's the thing that we have to also get. He said when you do it, not if you do it. So the expectation is that you will pray. That is the expectation that you and every one of us will pray. Come on, put your big finger in your chest. Even if I can't see you do it, I'm gonna believe you. I'm gonna just gonna believe you. You're doing it just because I asked. I want you to put your big finger on your chest and say, "I will pray." I'll try it one more time. I will pray. I want you to try. I want you to try it one more time. I want you to really feel it. I will pray. So now watch this. Now watch this. Watch this. So he says, "When you pray, say, Father." Now, understand this, say father. So it's, it's, it's assumed that you, that, that, and he's really, remember, he's discipling them. He's discipling them. Now, he's discipling them in a way to, to bring them into understanding that they have a relationship with the father, with God himself. They have a relationship with God. So now watch this now. So next, it says, um, he says now, and, and this, this, man, this is so powerful. And they understand this probably much more, much more than we do. Um, so the next thing he says, your name be honored as holy. 
your name be honored as holy. And here's the first question that you and I have to ask ourselves. Is it, do we honor his name as holy? Because then remember, remember, um, whoever was second, second Chronicles 14, 7, 14, um, says that we're called by his name, says we're called by his name. So to understand this now, so we have to, we have to establish his name as holy. We have to establish his name as holy. Understand this. In other words, we sanctify his name in our heart. Oh, man. Okay, let me try that one more time. We sanctify his name. We set apart his name as holy. So in other words, if we go back over to the old covenant, then we, then we come to understand as they understood that we do not take his name in vain, that we do not just use his name in vain, that we do, look, we honor his name. We honor his name. Glory to God. I want you to put that down in your notes. We honor the name of Yahweh. We honor the name of Jehovah. We honor the name of Jesus. See, Understand this. So when we pray, I'm telling you that when you pray and you call him father and you understand that he is really father to you. And then number two, it, when it comes to his name, you honor his name as holy. You honor his name as a consecrated name. So now understand this. So when you see it that way, you're getting ready to enter into a time of your life in prayer. Why? Because you recognize his name as holy, as above every other name. You, you recognize his name so that when you call his name, you, you are recognizing this is the name of the almighty God. This is the name. This is the name that is above every name. Understand this. I want you to get this now. I want you to get this. This is the name that is above any, any challenge that you could ever have in your life. This is the name right here. It's above every challenge. It's above every sickness. It's above every disease. It is above everything on this planet. This is the name to be honored. Now, how we handle his name says whether or not we really believe it that way. Understand this, you know, we're talking to people, we're talking to people that are, that says that, you know, you have named the name of Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. You named him as your Lord and your Savior. You, and now he's walking us through a process and saying, hey, look, if you really want to know how to pray, if you really want to know how to make an impact, glory to God, where you get whatever it is that you desire in your heart that is in proper alignment with my will, glory to God, You let me show you how to do it. Now, one, he must be father to you. You must recognize him as father. Now, here's one of the things that you can do. Because now, understand this. It doesn't just happen just because you say, I recognize him as father. It doesn't just happen. Understand this. Um, here's one of the things that you can do. Ask God, and I want, you to, I want you to pray this. I want you to pray this. You don't have to pray it right now, but at some point, I want you to pray this. I want you to ask God. I want you to ask God to give you a revelation of his name. Father, give me a revelation of your name. Give me a revelation of your name. Understand this. So now then um, receiving a revelation of his name. Now watch this. Number three is your kingdom come. And understand this, he's, he's literally telling them to pray this. And this is more towards a, if you read this in the 
in the original, you're going to recognize that this is more towards a a um a declaration, a declaration more than a request. We're not asking him, Father, let your kingdom come in the earth as it is in heaven. That's not what you. That's not what you're asking. You're decreeing the kingdom of God come. I dare you to try that in the situation that you're in. I dare you, I dare you, I, man, I double dog dare you to try that in the situation you're in. Man, if, you, if you, you're if you in a real fix right now, I, I dare you right in the midst of that situation. Kingdom of God, come in this situation right now in Jesus' name. You say, well, what happened? what happened to asking God? Understand this, understand this. They asked God, they asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. They didn't say, Jesus, would you teach us how to pray the prayer of uh, uh, the prayer of petition? That's not what they asked. They didn't ask, Jesus, would you teach us how to pray the prayer of agreement? They asked, teach us how to pray, as John has also taught his disciples. So we want to be taught how to pray. That's what we want. We want to know how to pray. So then watch this. Now, that is going to involve all, all types of prayer. We're going, to, we're going to save that for another day. That's going to involve all types of prayer. But now watch this. Watch this. So when we, when we start looking at this, and, and, and so there's a declaration that the kingdom of God come in your situation. There's a declaration that the kingdom of God come in your situation. Watch this. Let, let's move on because I, I really have uh, really have a little ways to go here. Um, now, the next thing he asked, the next thing he told them, give us this day. Here's here's what you here's what you're asking. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Understand this. <laughs> If you're going to ask God to give you this day your daily bread, then it probably means that you have already made a commitment, or at least Jesus expects that you have a commitment to pray uh, every day. God, give us this day our daily bread. So to understand this, God is not upset, and you can find it on the minute, glory to God. Uh, God is not upset with you when you ask prayer petition. Prayer petition. He's not upset with you. <laughs> Glory to God. He's not upset with you when you ask. I, I, man, I wish you. I wish you could really get that. I want you to put that in your notes. Put that somewhere where. Put that somewhere where you go. You, where you're going to see it all the time. God is not upset with you when you ask. That is the prayer petition. The prayer petition is a asking prayer. The prayer petition is a asking prayer. So he's not upset with you when you ask. So now watch this now, watch this. This, this is powerful because he says, get, he says, here, here's one of the, in this model that I'm teaching you, this is what, and this is what Jesus is saying to the disciples. In this model that I'm teaching you disciples, you are going to ask to give us this day our daily bread. Now, watch this. Watch this. Y'all remember Mary and Martha, right? Okay. So the next one is, uh, the next one is forgive us our sins. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is in debt to us. <laughs> okay. You, you know one of the major things that you know you know one of the major things that um that people are challenged the that people that that blocks people's prayers unforgiveness unforgiveness understand this God knows when you haven't forgiven someone forgive us forgive us our sins because we forgive everybody theirs See, they understood what the principle was. So they knew, and understand this, understand this. So they asked, they asked for forgiveness 
And it was clear that the only way that they could receive forgiveness is if they have already forgiven others. Understand this, if you still got somebody, if you still have somebody by the throat uh, in unforgiveness, understand this, your forgiveness is, is uh, how can I put this? Your forgiveness is waiting for you to release forgiveness. I'll try that one more time. Your forgiveness is waiting for you. What is it waiting for, Bishop? It's waiting for you to let that person to let that person go. Don't hold them by the throat anymore, because you got them by the throat in unforgiveness, and it's and it's impossible for God to forgive you because you won't forgive. It's I'm telling you, it's a prayer blocker. It's a prayer blocker. So God, so so you go to God in prayer, and and. You go to God in prayer, and the first thing that God sees when you come before him, understand this, you're still his child, you're still his son, you're still his daughter, you're still who you are, you're still in relationship with God, but he can't get past this, this quality, or it's not a quality, he, he can't get past this, this cancerous thing called unforgiveness, because you hadn't forgiven others and uh, and you're asking for forgiveness. Understand this: this is a regular thing that you and I should be asking for. I'm gonna try it one more time. You say, "Well, well, well I, I haven't done anything." Well, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't be so sure about that. You know, you may not have done anything that you know, but you know, I mean, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go ahead and ask for forgiveness. Glory to God! Every night when my when I pray with my son, man. That, that's on the table. That is on the table. I want to make sure that he's trained to ask God for forgiveness in Jesus' name. I want to make sure that he's trained to ask God for forgiveness. Every night we, every night we pray together, you know, that's on the table. Understand this. Whether, whether it's something you did said or thought, whether it's something you did, said or thought, God, forgive us. If we have done anything, if we have done anything, we ask your forgiveness right now in Jesus' name. Understand this. It's clear. The only way that prayer works is if you have already forgiven somebody, people, anybody that you have by the throat in unforgiveness. You say, well, how do, well, you, you say, well, how in the world do I know whether or not, uh, I think that I forgave them. Well, how in the world do I know? I, I pray a real test to come to you in Jesus' name. I pray that that person shows up. And if there's a funny feeling on the inside, if you can't hug them like you, like you happy to see them and it's not phony, if you, if you cannot do that, you have not forgiven them. I was just like, they just marinate just a minute. Glory to God. Because if, if they have wronged you and you have indeed forgiven them, you can hug them. If you are other, you can hug them. If you can hug people that you like that have wronged you, then I promise you that if somebody wronged you and you forgave them, hallelujah. If you can put that up on the screen, put that up there. Hallelujah. I ought to get, let's see how many hallelujahs should I get. I should get 27, 26 hallelujahs. I should get 26 hallelujahs. Okay, so to watch this now, I got, I got to keep it moving here. Watch this. Watch this. This is powerful. So the disciples asked him, teach us how to pray. Jesus taught them how to pray. Now, watch this. Watch this. Here's the, here's the next thing. Uh, here's the next thing. Oops, we lost somebody. Okay, so here's the next thing. <laughs> I'm just messing. I'm just messing. I mean, we did lose somebody, but anyway. Okay, here's the last thing. Do not bring us into temptation. 
Do you realize that that is a quality of prayer? Ooh, that, that, is, that is one of the benefits of prayer. <laughs> Glory to God. I, I love it. I love it. My God in heaven. Don't you love it? That is one of the benefits of prayer. Do you realize how, many, how much temptation you can escape if you would just pray? I'm going to ask that question one more time. Do you realize how much, <laughs> glory to God, do you realize how much temptation you can escape if you just pray? You don't have to be tempted. You don't have to be tempted. One of the problems is, is that, see, if you and I pray, there are things that God can put before you that you know that you're challenged with, and you can address that thing right in prayer so that you don't ever have to be tempted with it. Hallelujah. Watch this. Watch this. Let, let's, let's go just a bit further. Now, this is good stuff. Okay, so now you, you guys have that so far, right? Watch this. Now, this, this is where we, this, since you have that, since you have that, now, since you, now watch this now. Since you have all of that that we just talked about working, since you are you don't have any problem uh, sitting at the feet of Jesus or going into prayer and, and and get quiet before God so that you can hear what He's saying. Since you don't have a problem with that, since you're not prob since you don't have a problem because nobody's trying to help you. Let me let me okay. Since you're That's what that's what the situation was with Mary, uh, Mary and Martha. Mary was upset with uh, Martha was upset with Mary. Let me try it one more time. Martha was upset with Mary because she wouldn't help. Since you don't have that problem, since you don't have since you since you do understand uh, this prayer model that I just shared with you, since um, uh, uh, since you since you got that, okay, good. Now understand this, Carla. Verse number five. Okay, you are muted. Apologies. Uh, verse right. five. He also said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him at midnight and says to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I don't have anything to offer him. Then he will answer from inside and say, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I have gone to bed. I can't get up to give you anything. I tell you, even though he won't get up and give him anything because he is, because he is his friend, yet because of his friend's shameless boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. Okay, so stop. So because now watch this now now and and I think the eight CSB you know just, it, it it's it it's grim, uh, not grim, it, it is theologically correct in the wording that is used. I, I've I've already looked at it. It is theologically correct in the wording that it uses, um, but I don't think it does justice like the King James does. Now the King James uses the word importunity. It, 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 it uses the word importunity. Here, it translates that word importunity. Um, it translates that word um, by saying shameless boldness. Yeah. Sh shame, shameless boldness. In other words, <laughs> I really want you guys to get this. Shameless boldness. Now, th this word, this word is a very powerful word. Now, remember, remember what he says in this in this narrative here. He says, he says, though he will not get up. And, and remember, he's he's sharing an example, he's sharing a parable with you. So he says, though he won't give up. Uh, get up and give to him, watch this, 
because they're in a relationship, because they have a friendship. Just because there's that relationship there does not mean that they are going to, uh, that they are, that you're going to um, receive. Watch this. Watch this. This is so powerful. I love it. Now, if there is a quality, and the quality is in importunity. The quality is in importunity. Now, understand this. Understand this. So he says, though he will not get up and give to him because it, because it is his friend, but because of this, the King James says, but because of this importunity, he'll give up, he'll get up and give him whatever he needs. Now, but I want to talk about that word importunity, Carla. I want to talk about that word because, because that word, um, that word, it means it, because that word, it means, um, or it, it, I should say it this way, it can be rendered as it can be rendered as a positive. Now watch this now. It can be rendered as positive. Um, <laughs> but through a process of being just shameless. I mean, just shameless. How many of you, let me ask you this question. How many of you have ever, have ever said, you know what? I'm just, <laughs> glory to God. How many of you have ever said, you know what, I'm just, I'm just tired of folk, you know, I, I've, I've asked them, I've asked them twice. Now, I, I ain't going to keep on asking. I didn't ask their tails twice. Can I say tail on here? I didn't ask their tails twice. And and they have not, I mean, they, they, they you know, they probably just don't want to do it. I ain't going to keep, I ain't, I ain't going to beg nobody. Understand this. That's not what this guy did. Understand this, it's a quality of prayer. It is, it is a quality, it is a quality of prayer. Understand this. Let's look back at the narrative here, Carla. It says, though it is his friend, he will not get up. He knew it was his friend, and he knew that his friend had a friend that was that that that's at the house. He knew that. But then he says, but, you know, I can't get up. We're already in the bed. I mean, you, 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 coming, you coming by here at midnight asking, asking for stuff. You know, I ain't getting up. The kid's in bed. I'm in bed. The floor's cold. I ain't getting up to give you nothing. See me in the morning and understand this. <laughs> I, I have a sneaking suspicion some of you guys have already said that to somebody. But now watch this. Watch this. This, this, is, this is powerful. But he says, the, and I want you to get the I want you to get the the quality of prayer in this. He said, though he though it is his friend, he will not give get up. To you. Because of his shameless boldness. In other words, let me let me tell you, Amina, what that looks like. Father, I've been believing you for this for nine months. And I just want you to know I ain't going nowhere. And, you know, and if I have to ask you every day, I'm going to be asking. If I have to, if I have to keep bombarding heaven every single day, I, I will not let up. I'm not backing up. I'm not giving up. God, I... I I need this right here, or I desire this right here. In other words, un understand this, shameless boldness. <laughs> and, and really think about this. Really think about this. I want to know what you think about this. That's what I want to know. I want to know what you think about this. This guy did not feel bad about going and asking his friend at midnight, For whatever he was asking him for, he he was not ashamed to go that late at night, wake everybody up, and ask. 
He was not ashamed to, he was not ashamed to ask. He was not ashamed at how big the thing was that he was asking for. He was not ashamed. See, all of these things we need to settle in our heart. Man, we're talking to a big God. We're, we're talking to a big God and understand this. We, we, so all of these things that you that you have in your heart, well, I don't know whether I should ask, ask for this or not. Well, I already asked for this. Well, I don't know when I, I you know, I don't want to beg. You know, see, see that I don't want to beg. That's pride right there. That's pride right there. The only reason that that this guy pushes through in prayer because he was willing to ask and ask and ask and come back the next day like he did like 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 he didn't like like you didn't even ask the first day just ask and ask and ask thank god thank god thank god understand this in other words god i ain't even going nowhere i'm gonna stay in your face until this thing manifests I, have anybody ever said that glory to god god i'm gonna stay in your face till this thing manifests <laughs> glory to god has anybody ever said that has anybody ever gone after something in prayer and said god i'm gonna stay in your face till this thing manifests see that is called importunity it is a quality of prayer it is a quality of prayer and and if you and i have that quality in prayer i'll tell you what we don't have and that's pride and I tell you, another thing that we don't have, another thing that we don't have is, is a quitting spirit. I tell you, another thing that we don't have, we don't have, we don't have the ability to be pushed back. <laughs> Glory to God. I, I want you to try that, man. Glory to God. Now, let's make sure before you go to trying that. Let's make sure it is something that is in agreement with the will of God. I'll try that one more time. I say, make sure it is something in agreement with the will of God. Make sure it's something that's in agreement with the will of God. You know, God, this I found this in your word. So I know that this is one of the things that you spoke of in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter number two, where you said, that where you said that these that this is one of those things that are freely given to me this is one of those things god i'm gonna stay i'm gonna stay in your face until this thing manifests you know i don't know what the problem is right now god i don't know what the problem is but i, I know one thing i'm gonna stay in your face until this thing manifests you now understand this understand this God is not the one, God is not the one that needs to change. See, if the thing hadn't manifested, he's not the one with the problem. So I'm going to stay in your face until this manifest means that I'm going to stay in your face to everything on the inside of me change and lines up with you so that you can give me that. So that this, so that I, this could absolutely manifest. <laughs> Glory to God. You guys getting this? Glory to God. I'm going I'm to stay in your face. Glory to God. Look, folks, I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know. If you get in the face of God, hey, if you get in the face of God, if you get in the face of God for the thing that you've been after, if you get in the face of God and, and understand this, you get in God's face. The stuff that's wrong on the inside of you is going to change. The stuff that's on that's on you that's wrong, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's going to change. It's going to change in Jesus' name. But now understand this. But you, I'm telling you, you got to be. You you have to be. You have to be enduring. You have to have shameless boldness. God. I know this thing looks huge right now. Hey, glory to God. I know this thing looks huge right now. And, and in my head, in my head, the enemy is telling me that I can't have this, but I'm going to stay in your face till my mind changes. 
I'm going to stay in your face till my heart changes. I'm going to stay in your face, God, until every fiber of my being changes where you're free to give me that. Are you guys are you guys getting this? <laughs> I have a question. Oh my God. I'm telling you because now understand this. Because what he said in his word, um, what he said in this word, um, oh, verse number nine, Carla. I don't think we went there yet, did we? Okay, now watch what he says. Watch what he says. See, you have to get this because this is God's word. Read. You're, you're muted again. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek. I say what? Ask, and it will be given to you. That's the prayer petition. Ask, and it, and it might be. Will be. Uh, well, there's a 50 50 chance. Huh? Will what be. about it, Carla? Will be given to you. It will be given. Will is a definite. In other words, God is already stating his will. What's, what's your will then, God? I will to give you this. So now watch this. So when you're getting in the face of God, and and you're and you're operating by this by this quality called importunity, the, the shameless boldness. I ain't afraid to ask God for anything. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on, I want you to put your big thing in your chest and say, I'm not afraid to ask God for anything. See, that's what God likes. God loves it when you and I are not afraid to ask him for things. You say, well, man, that, that's, that's kind of huge right there. Well, we serve a huge God. Man, I wish I had just one amen, man. I, I just wish I had just had one. I didn't see an amen. You got God. one, sir. One amen. I see an amen. Glory <laughs> to God. I'm telling you, you cannot be afraid to ask God for anything. And, when, and understand this. And when you ask God for something, my God, I need you to get this. Woo, glory to God. When you ask God for something, understand this. If you have, uh, uh, if you have functioned according to this model prayer, if you have functioned according to that, then you already have expectation. You already have expectation. Give us this. Give us this day our day break. You know what that turns on? Expectation. My God, that turns on expectation on the inside. God, give me this house, God. Turns on expectation. God, here's the car I'd like. Give me this car, God. Expectation. God, change me on the inside, Father. Expectation. Turns on expectation. Now watch this. Once you, once you request that from God, once you require that from God, you turn on that expectation, man, and say, you know what? I'm going to stay in your face till this comes, Father. I'm going to be in your face. I'm going to be in your face until this thing manifests. Some of you may be trying to break some, break some, uh, some behavioral habits, some, some habits that you have in your life. Understand this. You know how that thing is going to go? It's going to go by you saying, God, I'm going to get in your face. I'm going to be in your face until this, until, until this deliverance manifests. I'm going I'm to be right in your face until it manifests. I ain't going nowhere. If I have to, if, if, if it doesn't manifest, before I come out of prayer today, Father, I'm gonna be back in. I'm gonna be back in your face tonight. I'm gonna pray tonight. If it if it doesn't manifest by the time I fall off to sleep praying, God, I'm gonna be in your face when I wake up. See, that's important. Get that get that quality down. 
get hey, get that quality down in Jesus' name. Hey, man. Man, I don't think we can go any further. I don't even know whether you can handle it anymore. Wow. But understand this. Ask, and it's going to be given you. Seek. You're going to find it. Not, it's going to be open. You understand this. Those three things, you use the same level of importunity, the same level of shameless boldness. Use the same level and just keep on going for it because you already have God's yes. I'm going to try that one more time. I say you, you'd use the exact same quality because you already have God's yes. Amen. Glory to God. Any questions? Yes, I have one, Bishop. Uh, sure. Uh, can you give an example of doing that and still staying in faith? Can you connect that with faith? Because <clears throat> I used to do that, but I stopped doing it because I uh, I thought when you have faith, you, you already have it. You don't ask for it again. You just thank him for it. You don't keep asking. So you, you, you know when you know when I ask again, Elder. See, I'm I'm just blatantly honest with myself. I'm blatantly honest with myself, and um, and you know when I ask again, I ask again when. I am not sure that I was in faith when I asked. Outside of that, you know, I still function from this, from this, uh, uh, this quality of importunity, and I get in the face of God. I'll get in the face of God day after day and thank Him for it. Father, I know, I know that you've done that in Jesus' name. I know that you have. I get back in, I get back in His face just. I just get right back in the face of God and, and I thank him. I decree, I declare. Remember, remember this, all uh, praying with all prayers. Praying with all prayers. If, 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 with, if when you go, now remember, that's the, that's the prayer, that's the prayer of faith. What things soever you desire when you pray, Believe you receive it, believe you receive them, and you shall have it. Remember, when you do that, when you do that, that is that is one type of prayer. You're getting in the face of God. You're asking according to, uh, you're asking according to his word. You're pulling that in by, by your faith. But now understand this, understand this. Some people have believed for houses. Some people have believed for believe God for houses, and the house did not manifest at the same time that they asked. So, so they didn't necessarily have to go back to God and ask. First of all, they had to they had to go through everything that I just I just told you about. They had to go right back through all of that. You know. Is there anybody that I'm holding by the throat in unforgiveness? Is there anybody? Is there, what, is there anything that could have blocked that prayer? Is there anything could, that could have brought, blocked that? I'm in the face of God. Okay, so God, um, you know, is my heart clear of everybody? Uh, Father, am I, did, did I ask that in faith? Was I in doubt when I asked that? Did I slip back from my faith? See all of these, all of these things go into, uh, go into, uh, into question when you are when you're believing God. And so, but now remember, importunity just means that you're still at that door. Even if you don't ask, you're still at that door. Father, I thank you. I know you're gonna bring that bread out of here. I thank you. I got, I got these, I got the guests at the house. Thank you. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. I ain't going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Father, I thank you. See, 
but if but if you know that there are some things that if you if you know or if you just think now here's where you have to make a distinction you and the devil this is where you have to make that distinction whether it's you when you go to god and you say you say father I, you know um I don't know whether I was in doubt or not when I asked you that. Um, now, is that the devil lying to you or, or do you indeed question that? If you know that it is indeed you that question that, ask again. Ask again. I'd rather ask again than, uh, than to believe I'm in faith and, and are not. I'd rather ask again. I'm going I'm to, God, I'm going to come to you this time. I'm going to make sure that I'm asking you in faith. And then, but I'm still not going anywhere. I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna exercise that quality of the opportunity. I'm still gonna exercise that quality. I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna stay in your, stay in your face. If there's something on the inside of me that needs to change, I'm still gonna be in your face because I believe that I received at the point that I prayed. Th does that make sense? See, far too many people, far too many people have, uh, have believed that they were in faith, they were not. And, and, if, we, and, if, and if people go back to those 12, um, if, if people go back to those 12 uh, principles of faith that I talked about, if they go back to those 12 principles of faith, they're going to they're gonna understand whether or not they're in faith or not. They will understand that. And if any of you desire that, you can go right to uh, you can go right to the profitcenter.com and you can just start, you can just start for principle number one and, and go on. You go right to profit center, the, the profitcenter.com. Make sure you put the word the in there. The profitcenter.com. You can go there. It's absolutely free. Obviously, there's, you know, it's um. What does it say, Carla? Uh, it says, um, uh, name your price. It says, name your price, which means your price could be 0, 0.00, and it'll still give it to you. Or if you're feeling generous, you can you can put whatever you want to put in there, and it'll give you, and it'll give it to you. Understand this. We pay, we pay for that site. I'm paying for that site every single month. I do that personally. I do that personally. And all, everything that's connected to it, I pay. For, I pay. But now understand this. So when, when we put that up there, uh, absolutely free where you, where you guys can get it. The, uh, the, the reason I do that is because I don't want you, I don't want you not being able to get it because you don't, because you don't have uh, $7. I don't, I don't want that to be a reason. I don't want that to be a reason. I want you to be able to go over there and I want you to get that word and a word like this, I want you to hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it. Put it in your ears, put it in your eyes, let it come out your mouth. Put it in your ears, put it in your eyes, let it come out your mouth. Put it in your ears, put it in your eyes, let it come out your mouth until, until you get a manifestation. God, I'm gonna keep on doing this. I'm gonna keep on doing this. I don't care what the devil's doing. I'm gonna keep on doing this because I'm going to have manifestation. When you hold on to manifestation like that, if you hold on to your prayer that you made and the faith that you have applied, if you hold on to it like that, I'm telling you, you are going to come into manifestation. Praise God. Amen. Any, any other questions? Any other questions? Praise when God. had her hand up? Say it again. Gwen had her hand up. Uh, Gwen? No, I didn't have my hand up. I was just agreeing to what Bishop was talking about. Okay, praise God. Awesome, man. Awesome. Man, I really pray that you get, man, I want y'all to get this so bad. 
I want you guys to get this so bad. Glory to God. Because I know, you know what, you know what, Carla? I know that we are setting right in a time of manifestation. I know. Let me tell you something, folks. I know that like I know my name. And if you and I just line up with God, I'm telling you, you're going to be able to ask, and I'm telling you, manifestation, it'll happen just like that. I'm telling you, if you just decree some things, man, just look out. Because in this season right here, in this season where we are right here, it, understand this. You remember that scripture over in, over in Ephesians, Carla? Ephesians, uh, was it chapter number, chapter number three, I think it is? Three and 20. And God is able to make, no, that's the wrong one. Um, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all things that we ask or think. Ask or think. He's able to do it, folks. And if you and I, if you and I lock in at that level, I'm telling you, you manifestation, bam, glory to God. There it is, manifestation. Hey, man, I'm telling you, we're sitting right in the midst of it. You know, glory to God. I'm telling you, we are sitting right in the midst of it. I know, I, I know this like I know my name. I know this like I know my name. If there's ever anything that you desired to go after, that, that you desired to go after, I'm telling you, this is the season right here. I speak that prophetically, glory to God, but I'm telling you, I have a real knowing on the inside. And if you if you just decide to go for it, this, this is the season right here. This is the season right here. Glory to God. This is the season. But, you know, we, it can be the season, but if you guys don't go for it, if you guys don't, don't put this into practice, I love what, uh, what someone, and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll share this, but I won't tell you who it was. They can tell you if they, if they want. Um, you guys remember that time we talked about, um, you guys remember that time we talked about uh, a challenge you guys remember that time I talked, I, I challenged you on um, on eliminating debt. You guys remember that? Yes. You you guys remember that? It was a it was a midweek. Um, it put me, give me a thumbs up if you remember that when we when I I challenged you with that. We were talking about faith, and we were talking about applying faith to eliminating debt. You guys remember that? Well, someone someone shared with me that they that they actually did that, and I think within a two or three month period, I'm, 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 I'm don't remember the time period now. They they eliminated twenty eight thousand dollars doing this right here. I'm telling you, if you if you and I. And just just give some thumbs up. That's praiseworthy right there. Man, that's a glory to God. Um, if you and I take God at his word, let me try that one more time. If you and I take God at his word, if you and I take God at his word, I'm telling you that God will do it. Now, I may givers. I may want to add that part because sometimes we try to do that and we're not we don't we're not tithers and we're not givers and we and we're trying to manifest something when we're breaking other laws. But I'm telling you when if, when you do this, when you do this word right here, when you do this, I'm telling you manifestation happens. Manifestation happens. I have to let you guys go. I've been I'm, I've been I've been on here too long. I think I've been just trying to drill this in you uh, to make sure that you get it 
and make sure that you jump on it, activate it, walk, walk this thing out and watch God. Because I'm telling you, this season right here is wired. It's pregnant. It's pregnant with harvest. This one right here, the one that you're sitting in right now, this season that you're in right now is pregnant with possibility. And the possibility is all yours. Amen. All right, come on, let's let let's give, let's Amen. give, let's give, let's give. Elder C, would you bless the offering today? Yes. are going into your eyes, they're going into your ears, they go down into your heart, and then out of your heart, your mouth speaks. That's how it works. So if, you're, if your conversation is off, if you still cussing, it's because of what you fed yourself yesterday. See, understand this, God is not glorified. Now, I want you to make sure you get this. God is not glorified when something bad happens to you. He's glorified when he brings you out. Um, let me try that one more time. See, he's not glorified because you're on drugs. He's glorified when you come out. He's not glorified when there's a sickness on your body. He's glorified when you come out of that sickness. And so now watch this now. And so our proper response brings us out of anything. 